I wanted to talk to you about the Abu Dhabi situation. Um, listening. So, so they do cloud seeding there, and I didn't realize that that was how they got all this flooding. For those who don't know, cloud seeding is I think they go up with an aircraft and they uh, they drop um, it's like salt or, or, or something like salt yeah. into the atmosphere, and that causes the, uh, the the water vapor to get cold, which causes it to condense, which causes it to rain. Um, and yeah. it flooded that fucking city. And I saw a guy in a canoe <laughs> going, going, they're canoeing through the streets. That's and great. Shit. He just had a canoe and, just in case. Oh, it's English. <laughs> was so good. It's English was, you never know. Well, you got to remember that's that place where they built like that, that cool island with all the, the you know, off the shore that looks like a palm tree or yep. whatever. Like, I'm it's probably for that, probably oh, a catamaran yeah. actually. Anyway, um, with all Abu Dhabi might have the highest concentration or at least top two or three concentrations of supercars in the world. That place is full of fantastically expensive million dollar cars what are the insurers going to do insurance agencies going to do it probably go bankrupt i mean it is mm. in general you know we've seen the market absorb maybe 10 crazy cars you know in a salvage situation a year mm -hmm. and there are hundreds hundreds and hundreds of bugattis Koenigseggs, paganis and you know you don't even worry about Lamborghinis and Ferraris. Can I ask a quick, a quick question? Um, <laughs> don't even worry. Do you, so if you have one of these Bugattis or whatever, do you go to Geico to get that insured? Or is there like a big insurance company that those guys go to that we don't even know about? There are collector car insurance companies in the U.S. like Haggerty and Grundy and, and things like that. So absolutely there are over there. I don't know which ones provide insurance over there. I know Lloyd's of London okay. is big in the area. Yeah. And so... There are different insurance programs, and there are some guys that probably self-insure, which could be catastrophic. Um, so, you know, if you looked at flooding, like the flooding that happened in Naples uh, about two years ago, where uh, Freddie Hernandez Tavares, who's been on your channel talking about his P1 that was flooded, mm -hmm. you know, a good 50 big cars got flooded there that eventually made their way onto the market. Here we're talking about hundreds and hundreds of cars, maybe thousands that mm. are of that caliber that there's no absorption for. Uh, so it's going to be wild. I mean, so there's, there was also flooding in Dubai, in Bahrain. There's it's, it's everywhere. And they received about two years worth of rainfall in 24 hours, which was only like a foot, but mm. Mm. it was still much more than the infrastructure could provide. And they've got a ton of underground parking garages mm. just filled with these cars. Wow. And, you know, when you think about like ultimate value of a car that has <laughs> been in a flood, you're talking about maybe 60 to 70 percent once it's perfectly fixed with no evidence that it ever happened. Um, mm. Whereas the, you know, so the the salvage value is 10, 20 percent. That Tron look is sick, by the way. Oh, yeah, that's a it's a cheater way of wrapping cars because you don't have to do the edges. Um Mm. And so it's uh, it's a lot easier to wrap a car that way than total color change it. Uh, but yeah, so like these cars, you know, that's a Gallardo Superleggera or a, a 458. Those uh, there's a thousand of those and they're all ruined. Mm. Uh, but there's also, you know, multi-million dollar, uh, you know, Bugattis, Koenigseggs and things of that nature. And there's two factors that happen to the marketplace now. So the low end stuff starts to be like, all right, well, maybe I'm not going to buy an entry level Pagani because I could buy this one that was in a flood in Dubai and try to do something YouTube style with it. Mm -hmm. But also we've now got to replace these hundreds of cars with existing inventory that doesn't exist. So it could radically change the values of these remaining cars. <laughs> um, yeah, that's oh, the yeah. AI generated image, but yeah, uh, I, yes, I, I figured it out when I saw the enormous cartoon toucan that swims. Right, yeah, <laughs> there's good things like I didn't that. See but it. that, but the event, the Aventador in the top left raft was actually, you know, they the Dubai the guy from Fruit Loops was there, so I didn't think it was real. <laughs> yeah, and and that's an AI image as well. But yeah. they, it's there's a ton of cars, and nobody knows how they're going to get sold. They're not really U.S. eligible, so. I uh, mm. I just sold a, a Lamborghini that I'm you know to out of partially the thought of cashing in so that I can go shopping for something here and just find a way 
Um, I, I've had a bunch of flood exotic Wait, cars. So you, for, are you seeking out a car because you think there's an opportunity? Because I would, my mind was on the other side. Like, ooh, how does a guy like you avoid this problem? No, we do seek the problem out because mm. my strategy has always been to buy the worst examples of the coolest cars possible. And so I had a, and these are freshwater floods, which is considerably better than like the saltwater flood from the uh, hurricane mm -hmm. that flooded out Freddie's. He's already one. selling, boys. Pitch it, Ed. Yeah, well, it just means that you have <laughs> you a want to get yourself a freshwater. Flood. That's it. <laughs> the That's best it. floods on the market. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Don't mess with the saltwater stuff. But it, you know, they, sometimes they can work. It's a huge, huge thing. Um, we tried to buy a Bugatti that was driven into the Galveston Bay. A couple uh, for as insurance fraud a couple of years ago, and that oh, car's moved hmm. around a bit. But it's it's going to be a wild market influence, and that's kind of what I always look for. Um, mm. You know, how can you change the perception of these cars? Um, like for instance, so what I was really selling my cars for a couple of weeks ago, uh, I was trying to sell this Murcielago and a Spiker C8 Laviolette that I bought from Missy Elliott a couple of years ago because I was trying to buy that Bugatti that I mentioned that Mayweather had for a while. It was the Frankfurt Motor Show car, and then Birdman bought it, and then he gave it to Justin Bieber as a present, and then it got bought by the Golly. nephew of these scam artist racing drivers. Wait, so they gave it to Justin Bieber as a present, then he sold it to somebody's nephew? <laughs> yeah, so then that guy sold it to Mayweather. Like this Bieber guy more and more. That's right. <laughs> And uh, and then I don't know. I'd have to listen to every rap song ever to say that I'd heard a little Uzi Vert song, but apparently he owned it for a while. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so uh, it, it's like a terrible condition Bugatti with a really cool backstory that would be fun mm -hmm. to share at Cars and Coffee. Um, but the guy's just you know, the, the price is just stupid. So uh, now it's like, well, maybe I'll go flood car shopping in Dubai because there are going to be a ton of them. And it's unclear how they'll be able to liquidate them. You know, we're talking about the supercars, but like, I mean, let's let's call that a million dollars for the supercars. At least ten times as many hundred thousand dollar cars oh, got absolutely. flooded. It's like that insurance market is is ruined. Like someone is probably jumping off a building or blowing their brains out over there, right? Like somebody's ruined. That's it's such a. I don't even know. Look, if you live in Abu Dhabi and there's an option for flood insurance, you would never click it. Right. Yeah, we ran into that in Atlanta in 2009. Uh, there was this massive drought, like Lake huh. Lanier, which is the biggest man-made lake in the United yeah. States, was down 30 feet. And Sonny Perdue was the governor at the time. And he had this thing where he came out and had a press conference and said, we need to pray for rain. And, and it worked. It, were, and it flooded this city like you could not mm. believe. I mean, there were so many. And you got to think, this is 2009. So the, the real estate right. market is in the dumps. And so oh, I remember 2010 is when we bought our first house as a married couple, my wife and I, and half of the houses had flood damage because mm. it was, it rained feet in the matter of a month right after this. And I'm, you know, I believe God can do a lot of great things. I don't know that he's responding to Sonny Purdue's requests for such things, but <laughs> they, uh, it. that's it. That's it. And it was, uh, yeah, so that's like a that's a Pagani Utopia that came out like yesterday, and this guy's Can I just say that's an through. ugly car. It's hideous. It is absolutely awful. Right. Like, Who's the market I mean, for that? Can you say the name of it again car. so Zach can find uh, a good Pag picture. Pagani Utopia? So Horacio Pagani was a designer for Lamborghini uh, Utopia, like the ridiculous to say that's the greatest place to ever live or whatever. Uh, and so it is, uh, he designed, uh, a couple of cars for Lamborghini, the 25th anniversary Countach and the Diablo SE 30. And then he went out to build his own car company and he built a car called the Zonda that came out in 2002. That was incredible. Mm -hmm. And it's one mm -hmm. of the most beautiful modern supercars ever made. And then they made the Wyra that came out in 2014. Uh, as a model year in the U.S. And then this is their third generation car, the Utopia, which is, I think, a terrible regression in styling. If anybody can pull up a It's hideous. Of, yeah. That's Pagani. A, that's Zach, can you pull up the car from Speed Racer? Because I'm getting terrible. nostalgic over it. You're, okay, bit. so you're 100% around the Speed Racer thing, but but some of... <clears throat> all right, so, all right, hang on a minute. But grab a picture of a Pagani Zonda. Uh, that's a Wyra. <laughs> Uh, which is reasonably okay. But if you go to the generation prior to that, look up a Zonda Cinque, C-I-N-Q-U-E. Oh, you can't say that here. <laughs> <laughs> now we're demonetized. Uh, the, uh, what we call the Asian grocer near me. 
<laughs> that is a uh, that's a heavily modified uh, Zonda. There are uh, more simplistic versions that aren't quite as. Right, this is uh, that's a Hot Wheels see car. The speed racer car. That's a Hot Wheels car right there. This is sick too, but like like you don't want to drive this. Like I don't want to drive right. this. No. Well, but and and to be honest, it, you know, there's a there's a huge market of people who are spending the money that their granddad worked really hard for that support companies like you know Pagani and Koenigsegg and Bugatti and mm -hmm. things like that, uh, and you know a lot of them are now in the Middle East and yes, so a lot of these cars are now underwater. Uh, Zach, show that car I linked in the in the in the chat. That thing's always appealed to me. I like. Are there any cars, Ed? Where you sit in the middle and there's one seat, like a Formula One car. So the McLaren F1 uh, that came out in 93 was the first, you know, widely known car to have a center seating position. There were some Ferrari concept cars and things like that. They still had two seats flanking them. So it was a three seat car. Mm. Um, there are a couple of track only cars like McLaren just released the Solara that is a single seat car. Lamborghini had a concept called the Iguista that is a single seat car. But the, in general, the F1 is the one that you drive in the center. They made a speed tail uh, limited run of cars that is the same idea. And, and that is, you know, currently in F1, they made 106 cars, 67 road cars, I think. And they're, they're worth 20-ish million uh, for mm -hmm. a road car. And then, you know, the race cars are kind of a little more than that. And those, for for people generally our age, you know, under 60 years old it's the ultimate car uh and i think that there'll, there'll be 100 million dollar cars before too terribly long just because it is like wow. as good as it gets uh we borrowed one for a production that we did called car trek a couple of years ago and i drove it around a bit and it's it's i mean it's phenomenal obviously it's a 90s car so the brakes are weak the exhaust isn't all that great but it's i mean it's still as good as it needs to be for a car guy to justify its value which mm -hmm. is kind of the question of any of them um, but it was kind of some what some would say the first hyper car and it used a BMW V12, 627 horsepower, and it was the fastest car of all time. So 241 miles an hour uh, that the Bugatti Veyron would eventually be. Yeah. So um, they're uh, they're plenty awesome. Yeah, that's one. That's a low mirror early car. And uh, most of them are silver. There's a lot of other interesting cars. We've chased one for years uh that was owned by the the biggest drug runner for el chapo this guy named umberto ojeda it's a mm -hmm. brown car with a red interior and gold wheels that was maybe a payment from some italian clients for some product but it went into mexico in like 98 and this guy uh got he he owned the car and he didn't drive it all that much, but he got gunned down in his armored but also gold plated Jeep Grand Cherokee and the vehicle got shot like 300 times, mm. but one bullet went in through the lock cylinder and hit him in the abdomen. And so he was able to drive home before he died. And his son was like crouched in the footwell of the car. So he got home and uh, they uh, then he died and he never told anybody where the keys were to his McLaren F1. And uh, it's been lost since then. And so uh, I've made a handful of videos chasing that exact car. And mm. uh, it's been one of the more compelling storylines. Trap lines. Lord Whips. That's it. <laughs> yeah. It's a very interesting uh, Instagram account to follow that one. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, it's the only one in that specification. But we the, think it's uh, probably still in Mexico. How much would that be worth if someone found it? I guess maybe it, it come when it's that rare, does it just come down to like which, you know, Saudi chic wants it the most? Well, there's a lot of big American car collectors that want them. And so it, it's if it was... Free and clear and perfect, it's worth 20 million bucks. But Oof. it's been sitting for decades. And so, and the recommissioning of a car like that is millions of dollars. It's got the hair on it of having been a drug lord's car, which some people wouldn't like, I would love. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's also the question of if you buy a car from the cartel, then it's sort of like you know that it came from or an ill gotten way. Mm -hmm. And then the question is well, will the US government? seize it from you mm. um and so you'd have to probably call the dea if you even had it and there's a lot of people that think i have it stored in my basement but i don't uh that'd be sweet it would be really really sweet as far uh, as they know you don't yeah that's right, wait, that's wait. right. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna maintain that narrative as long as we can. <laughs> and 
And so the, you probably have to call them and say, all right, what do I have to pay you to not care that I have this car so that I can ultimately put a license plate on it and drive? But um, it's it was, Wait, it was the wild. D- they but, take money to not care? Yeah. Absolutely, they take money to not. I'm care. naive. Okay, that's everybody right. does. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I mean, they'll they'll let you sell the drugs if you just tell them, you know, how much of it's theirs. But 